Good afternoon, good evening from where you are from. I'm Jacopo De Stefani. I'm from the Université Libre de Bruxelles from the Machine Learning Group, and I'm going to present you my work on machine learning strategies for multivariate and multi step ahead time series forecasting with a specific focus on mobility data. It is a joint work with Professor Bontempi and my colleague, a PhD student as well, Giovanni Buroni. And before going into the detail of multivariate uh, time series forecasting, I will go take things slowly and start just by reminding some key concepts. Basically, the fact that what we consider as time series are a time dependent signal. So we have a time index, uh, which is a variable t here, and our data is a vector that we can represent also in a graphical form that we can see here on the left side. Then when we have univariate time series, if you want to do time series forecasting with a machine learning approach, the approach we take is to assume the existence of a autoregressive model with a certain model order D and a certain um, error component. And this autoregressive model basically states that the future is going to depend on the past given a certain function, which is a node which we are trying to estimate, which is F. And it's a multiple step ahead problem in the sense that uh, we have the past, which is T observation, and we would like to forecast H successive step in the future from T plus one to T plus H. The error is just a stochastic uh, independently and identically distributed model with null mean and uh, a given variance. And uh, if we look at a previous work that has been done by a former colleague, Swaib Ben Tayeb, uh, on this topic, he identified mostly two strategies to do this multi-step ahead forecasting with machine learning technique, which are the recursive strategy, which is, consists basically in fitting a single model and using the prediction of this model one step ahead, re-injected into the model to produce the uh, further forecast. On the other hand, we have a direct strategy, which consists in having a separate model for each forecasting horizon we want to, to do. And each model is just trying to forecast one dependency in the future. So like one model for T plus one, one model for two plus two, and so on until T plus H. And if we want to take our initial data and to structure it into a format which is most suitable to fit a machine learning model, we need to do this process, which is called embedding. And on top, we see the embedding for a one step ahead in which we can see that uh, we have y t, y t minus one, y t minus two as the variable, the covariates we have, and we want to forecast the target variable, which is t plus one. On the other end, it is uh, uh, the same thing for the covariates, except that we want to forecast at t plus h. And so these are the way to restructure the data in order to be able to do univariate time series forecasting multiple step ahead. But what about uh, multivariate time series? Well, what we said until now applies is just that instead of having a single univariate vector, we have a multivariate vector. We have a matrix basically of values. And that if we want to apply the same methodology to perform either recursive or direct forecasting, the problem we encounter here is that if we pick a given model order D and um, we have a certain uh, amount of variable, let's say N, if we want to perform this embedding, we will have a D times N matrix as input and we will have also a um, vector problem as output. So the Theory still applies, but uh, we are things are kind of getting complex. And so what I'm going to present you is what we came up with to contrast this problem of curse of dimensionality, of increase of dimensionality, which is the, the DFML model. But before speaking about that, I will first introduce what is the landscape of, uh, of forecasting model for multivariate and multi-step wide forecasting. On one end, we have the, the red group, some traditional technique, like naive average uh, forecasting, traditional benchmark, like uh, all twinters, but in the multivariate version, RMI in the vector version, autoregressive in the vector version, 
So, which is the, the family of, let's say, statistical technique. On the other end, we have more like deep learning based technique, like deep belief network, recurrent neural network, like LSTM, like, C, like uh, sorry, GRU, convolutional neural network, CNN, and some particular combination of, uh, of neural network, which is for multitask learning, trying to fit multiple uh, forecasting problem at the same time with a shared common architecture. Um, third category is the one on the bottom of kernel methods, like support vector regression, but for multivariate uh, case and kernel ridge regression that once again using kernel tricks are able to in some sense contrast uh, this, this problem of dimensionality. But what we propose with uh, the DFML, which stands for Dynamic Factor Machine Learner, is kind to bridge the gap between deep learning and traditional technique. And why we plan to do so, we, we have done so in the past, is to uh, propose this framework that has a dimensionality reduction component that takes as input the multivariate time series that we have at the beginning and that outputs a set of factors which is a reduced number of factors compared to the original dimension. We then forecast these factors and uh, we then perform uh, like the reverse operation of dimensionality increase to retransform the factor into the, the original domain. And if you look closely, if you put like PCA as technique for dimensionality reduction and vector autoregressive at the forecasting technique, this is basically the same formulation as the dynamic factor model, which is a widely used model in econometrics. But what we propose is to mix and match uh, like PCA as a sort of traditional statistical uh, dimensionality reduction technique with some machine learning based forecasting technique, basically lazy learning. We had done a variant with an autoencoder and lazy learning. We tried also to optimize uh, jointly the parameters of PCA and lazy learning to perform model fit. And uh, in the end, we also proposed in the, the original paper, the uh, incremental version. So the dimensionality reduction, which can be updated incrementally as more uh, data comes in, which could make that apply applicable for like large scale big data settings. But what I'm presenting here today is an extension of this framework in which Instead of using only PCA, we try to put some dimensionality, dimensionality reduction neural technique like uh, feed forward multilayer perception autoencoder in the shallow, deep, or regularized form, LSTM autoencoder, GRU autoencoder, and a combination of LSTM and convolutional autoencoder. And instead of constraining ourselves to only having mach machine learning based method, we actually introduced some statistical methods forecasting technique, like uh, exponential smoothing, all to enters, the theta method, the combination, basically the majority of those methods that have been used at benchmark in the M4 competition. And as for machine learning base, we are using k-nearest neighbor, random forest, and some multiple input, multiple output uh, techniques. And so, on which data are we going to apply this? On mobility data, which are OBU data. OBU stands for onboard unit because we are collecting in real time uh, data from uh, this onboard unit that are some devices installed inside trucks, which are then passed to this uh, Lambda architecture pipeline that I'm not going to discuss into more details, but it, it, there's another contribution being developed by our research group to collect data from the tracks and to then output basically one uh, time series per street. And if you are interested in the architecture, here you can find a link to a presentation that discusses that into the details, but I will focus here mostly on what we are interested in, which is uh, the, the data I used, which is uh, um, with different granularities, 15, 30, and 60 minutes, and for spatial granularity that can come from the whole Belgium or for only the Brussels region. And as I said before, the data from the truck is transformed in a way to have one time series per street. 
I'm going to focus on uh, only the Brussels region with the data with a 60 minutes frequency using a sliding window of size 400 times steps, so 400 hours, 240 time series, 240 streets at a time, and try to forecast at 2, 6, 12, and 24 hours. Once again, if you're interested in the data, we made it available. It's available on Kaggle on, under the freight transportation data. And when I will publish the, the presentation, you will have some clickable links to get to those um, additional material that I am presenting. So for the experimental setup, what we also tried to compare was how does our model, the extended FML, perform with respect to, on one end, a set of univariate statistical benchmark, and on the other end, uh, some global kind of modeling through deep learning using LSTM, stateless, stateful, CNN, C and a combination of CNN and LSTM. And as for the benchmark, it's once again the benchmark I presented before, mostly those used during the M4 competition. So here you can see the rank uh, of the model. On top, we have the model with the lowest normalized mean squared error. On the bottom, the one with the highest normalized mean squared error. And we can see that if we employ PCA as dimensionality reduction in the extended DFML, the result we obtain is that actually for most of the horizon, up, I would say basically all the horizon, univariate simple technique are actually doing better than a complex uh, multivariate model. In some cases, it's simple exponential smoothing. In some else, it's an average uh, seasonal. With the exception here for H equal to 24, in which some deep learning techniques start to kick in and to, to get uh, better performances. But if we try to change so it's same setup, but instead of using um, PCA is dimensionality reduction. We use GRU, we use a recurrent neural network based dimensionality reduction. We can see that for shorter horizon, H equal to two, univariate methods are still doing better, but for all the other horizon, we can see that the, the methods that are here in orange uh, for the DFMN method and red uh, for the benchmark method, green for the deep learning one, we are having better performance and we get on top of the ranking this ex method, extended DFML method based on neural dimensionality reduction. LSTM cells performs as well as uh, GRU, but here I decide for the sake of presentation time to present only the, the GRU one. Another interesting result we got is that if we try to compare the reconstruction error from the, the dimensionality reduction technique, which is the NMS DIM on the x-axis, with the forecasting error, the NMSC at the end of the, the, the FML pipeline, for different uh, dimensionality reduction technique and different number of uh, components, two, three, five, and 10, what we see is that if we have uh, some points that are above the line, the line represents the equality between the two dimensionality reductions. So if we have some points that are above, it means that the forecasting technique is having worse performance than the reconstruction error. If it is below, the forecasting technique is doing better than the reconstruction error. And we can see that in almost all the cases, for shorter horizon, two and six, the um, forecasting method is improving actually over the dimensionality reduction, but the further we, we go in, uh, in time in forecasting horizon, the worse the, the performance with respect to the dimensionality reduction becomes. And here we can see, we can confirm in the GRU and LSTM column what we saw before that those are the, the one, if we look at the vertical axis at the end, NMSC, having the best uh, performance, the closer uh, points to the line, basically. And finally, what I wanted to show is that if we only focus on the deep learning technique, I tried uh, to implement this deep learning technique on um, uh, using a direct, so what, having the model that output a single neuron for each time step, uh, 
as opposed to a recursive method, one uh, neuron for T plus one, and then those uh, uh, measures that are injected. What we can see here is that if we consider horizon six and 12, the direct method is doing better than the recursive one, but while for shorter and 24 hour, it's the, the recursive one which is doing better, but that generally speaking, the direct method is showing less variance in the, in the prediction gives so prediction that are more stable. So to summarize, the extended DFML is a simple framework that allows you to combine statistical and uh, machine learning based technique for both uh, dimensionality reduction and forecasting. As I said before, RNN uh, for dimensionality reduction improves the performances of DFML over statistical technique. If you consider smaller horizon, DFML is able to outperform the dimensionality re uh, reduction technique while doing forecasting. And if we focus on deep learning, usually direct technique are displaying less variance than the recursive counterparts. Of course, what I should have mentioned also is that this is a preliminary experiment what I should do also is a fine tuning of the different uh, model parameters, as well as uh, comparing this um, technique also with a global state of the art uh, model like uh, deep AR, like neural network based technique. So this concludes my presentation. If you have any question, I am more than glad to take them either online, offline, you can drop me an email and we can have a chat uh, about it. So thank you for listening. And if you have a question, now is the time to ask. Excellent, thank you, Giacomo. Um, we don't have any questions in the chat, but we do have one and a half minutes left. So please, you know, just uh, think about the kind of things you would like to ask him. But, I mean, I'm always fascinated by, by um, uh, dimensionality reduction techniques. And in the old days, we had to do that because we didn't have the compute power, right? I mean, we didn't really do it to elucidate uh, patterns or features, but we, we basically were trying to save save compute power. What's the, what's the overall overarching motivation in uh, these days? What do you think? Is it, is it accuracy because you presented interesting results on accuracy? Um, or or is it, are these additional benefits to be had? Well, um, what I have to say for the original version of the, the DFML, the idea is that if you also apply, if you apply PCA as a dimensionality reduction technique, what you obtain also is orthogonality in the factor of you you obtain, which means that you are basically reducing a multivariate problem into a set of univariate problems because the, the factors are uncorrelated with respect to each other. So in that sense, uh, on top of having something efficient, you have something which is also, which have also good statistical properties. As yeah. for the, um, the deep learning technique, what I'm more interested in is see if they, they could better capture, especially this uh, recurrent architecture, the temporal dependencies uh, that, uh, that you can find in the data. And these experiments are showing that uh, indeed that there, is, uh, there is room for improvement using uh, these neural network techniques. One, another aspect, and it's good that you have mentioned that I didn't have the time to present here, but I'm also interested in, is also to compare the performances in terms of accuracy and the fitting time or the computational time in terms of producing the result to see whether if, if there is a trade-off, uh, which I'm sure that there, there is, but if there is, uh, how much is the, the trade-off? Is it good to have um, more additional computational time for a limited uh, in, uh, improvement in accuracy? That's, uh, that's an open question that I would like to answer. Yeah, very good. Maybe we'll, we'll find a hangout later on and we can chat a bit more because time's up. Jacobo, thank you very much. Please, uh, Jacobo is a student in, in Brussels University. Please uh, uh, do make uh, 